One morning, Thomas was at Ellsbridge Station when Stanley arrived. Good morning, Thomas, says Stanley. Good to see you again. We haven't talked for a while. Good to see you too, Stanley, said Thomas. Are you here for passengers? There's only one platform, you know. Stanley chuckled. No, no, just passing through. Waiting for the signal. You know how it is. Indeed, indeed, said Thomas. So, how are things? Oh, you know, same old, same old, said Stanley. It gets a little routine around here after a while. Kind of boring. But luckily I've got someone to mix things up every now and then. Someone, repeated Thomas. Hmm, now you've piqued my curiosity. Who is it? Hmm, said Stanley thoughtfully. Let's see, I'll give you three guesses. Hmm, said Thomas. Well, there's only so many female engines on this island, so I'm going to go with Belle. My goodness, Thomas, said Stanley. You are good. How did you know? Just seemed to fit, said Thomas. How long has it been going on? A couple months, said Stanley, but we're taking it slow. Probably the wisest course of action, agreed Thomas. Just then, the signal changed. Well, nice talking to you, Thomas, said Stanley, but it looks like I have to go. He started to pull away from the station. Oh, one more thing, he said. You didn't hear this from me, but uh, if you're looking for someone yourself, I think Rosie's got a thing for you. He whistled goodbye and pulled out of sight, leaving Thomas quite taken aback. Meanwhile, Percy had just popped into Alstead Castle. He had a load of books for the book fair that was coming up. You don't look particularly cheerful today, Percy, said Stephen. What's the matter? We, oui, Percy, qu'est ce que c'est, said Millie. What is it? Percy sighed. Well, if you really must know, I'm having some trouble with Lady. Oh, said Millie. Well, it is a good thing you have une amie française. We are love experts in France, you know. Millie, now is not the time, said Stephen. I'm sorry, Percy. She gets a little excited sometimes. It's fine, said Percy. I just, I don't know. We've tried talking about it, but it never seems to help. It only makes things worse. I just wish I knew what to say to her. Well, said Millie, why don't you pretend I'm Lady? What would you say to me? Well, said Percy. Meanwhile, La Fille in question was hiding out in the quarry when Mavis arrived with some china clay cars. Tut tut, lady, said Mavis. You really shouldn't be here. You're blocking the main line. Sorry, Mavis, said lady. I, I was just thinking. Thinking about what, dear? asked Mavis. Well, about... Well, you see... Now, now, dear, said Mavis. If you don't want to tell me anything, that's fine. But you certainly can if you'd like. I swear I won't tell a soul. No, no, no. I trust you fine, Mavis, said Lady. That's not it. I was just struggling with how to put it. You can put it however you want, dear, said Mavis. Well, said Lady, Percy and I have been having some problems with our relationship. We've tried talking it out, but it just never seems to work. Well, perhaps you just need to try it from a different angle, said Mavis. What are your conversations usually like? Well, said Lady, he'll usually say something like, Lady, listen, I know times are getting tough for us, but the only way that we're going to get through this is together, is if there really is an us. I know, Percy, but we can't do it the way we are now because it just isn't working. I understand, lady, said Percy. We need to make changes, but we also need to start accepting each other for who we really are. I do accept you, Percy, the real you, but you've become a different engine. Something's changed inside you. You're becoming dark, brooding, detached even. I worry about you, lady. There's something deep inside of you, something you're hiding, hiding from me, hiding from everyone. All you have to do is let it out, and we can work it out together. 
Percy, I can't. Please, I can't. I could talk to you before, but now it's like I don't even know you. You do know me, lady. And I know you. And I know that there is something wrong. Yes. Yes, there is, Percy. But not just with me. With you, too. Lady, you are my heart and soul. But when you're like this, I just, just can't bear, bear it. My word, said Stephen. I, I really don't know what to say, Percy. I don't either, said Percy. Which is why every conversation we've had for the past few weeks, months, has been exactly like that. Percy, said Millie, I think I know how you can help this. Go to her, tonight. Admit that you were wrong. Admit that you have faults. And say that she does too. But that you can look past them because you love her. Exactly, said Stephen. I can see your passion for her, Percy. I can see it in your eyes. You can always see passion in someone's eyes. You need to tell her how much you love her. And because of that love, you can overlook any faults that either of you have just to be with each other. Because that is what you truly want, isn't it? Of course it is, but I just... I don't know. I don't want this to end up the same way, said Percy. I just feel like we're not going to be able to change anything, no matter how hard we try. Then all you have to do is your best, lady, said Mavis. I think you're seeing a side of Percy you never knew existed, but you have to look past his faults and past your own secrets to find what you're truly looking for. Well, said Lady, then I guess I'll try. One more time, said Percy. And with that, Percy chuffed out of Alfstead Castle, and Lady steamed away from the quarry. Isn't this lovely, my dear? Hmm. <gasps> Commissioner Moonstone of Scotland Yard, who is this? Commissioner, this is Oliver Queen, CEO of Queen Consolidated. I've been alerted that a freight car full of Queen Consolidated equipment has been stolen from our research lab in Wellsworth, Sodor. Sodor, eh? You do realize I work in London, don't you, Mr. Queen? I understand, Commissioner, but I do want eyes open on the mainland in case the freight car is spotted there. Very well, Mr. Queen. I will assign some men to watch the rail guards for you. Thank you, Commissioner. You will let me know of any updates, won't you? I most certainly will. Now, I do think you should try to get some sleep, Mr. Queen. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe that it is quite late at night in Starling City. I tend to be up pretty late most nights anyways, Commissioner. Have a good evening. And you as well. Oh, oh, um, hello there, Rosie, said Thomas. Hey, Thomas, said Rosie. How's it going? Uh, I, I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good, said Rosie. But you know, I never really get to see you anymore, Thomas, she said. Yeah, yeah, I know, said Thomas. More engines just keep coming to the island, and then there's, you know, less chance that you'll run into any certain one in particular, right? <laughs> That's so true. You're so smart, Thomas. Oh, uh, well, thank you, Rosie. I, uh, I do my best. You know, we should totally start seeing more of each other, Thomas. I really enjoy my time with you. <laughs> well, um, 
that's something we'd have to go to the fat controller to sort out, figure out, you know what I mean, to do things. Um, I've got to go. Bye, Rosie. And Thomas chuffed hurriedly away. Henry was at Brendan Docks. He was preparing to take a long goods train to the mainland. Suddenly, Henry felt the jolt of another freight car being coupled on. Oi, what's this? More to pull, said Henry. As if this train isn't heavy enough already. I'm sorry, Henry, said Sidney. I was told to add this other freight car. Told by whom? Um, uh, I'm afraid I don't remember, said Sidney. Ah, <sighs> typical, said Henry. Well, you better move, Sidney. I'm leaving now before there are any more unexpected arrivals. Sidney quickly uncoupled from the last van and hurried away. With a whistle, Henry gave a great strong heave and started the train moving forward. Goodbye, Sodor, he said. I'll see you again soon. Lady was in a siding by the chocolate factory when Thomas chuffed in. Lady, he said. What are you doing here? Oh, hi there, Thomas, said Lady. I'm just, uh, waiting for Percy. I sent Duck out to fetch him. I need to talk to him about something. Is everything all right between you two? asked Thomas. To be honest, not really, said Lady. I... Percy's changed, and not in a good way. He used to be so kind and loving, but recently he's seemed sort of detached, sort of empty, cold-hearted almost, like he's lost faith in the world. That sure doesn't sound like the Percy I know, said Thomas. Because it isn't the Percy you know, said Lady. It's like he's another engine. He's not the same Percy that I fell in love with. Well, said Thomas, I, uh, I don't mean to intrude, but do let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Oh, Thomas, there is, said Lady. Because Mavis, she told me that I have to look past our own faults and fears, and then I'll find what I'm truly looking for. I think she meant Percy, but the thing is, I wanted to talk to Percy because I need to tell him that it's over. Because it's not working for us anymore. Because I don't love him anymore. There's something now that's very iron, very hardened about him. And I don't like it. I saw good in Percy. And I thought I loved him for it, but it made me blind. It made me overlook something, someone that was more deeply rooted in my heart. You, Thomas. It's you. Lady, I... I don't know how to put this, but... All these years, I've never said... I felt the same way. So... This... Is what you wanted to see me about. Percy, I... Listen, please, I just... No. No, lady. You don't have to explain. You don't have to say a word. Not one word. Because I can see it in your eyes. You can always see the passion in someone's eyes. It was always him that made your eyes burn. Never me. Not Percy. It was always meant to be you and Thomas the Tank Engine. Percy, please. Don't, Thomas. Don't. I am done. Done with you. Both of you. Percy, Percy. This was me. All me. Don't blame Thomas for this. Blame me. Oh, I do blame you, lady. And I see clearly now <gasps> every tear 
I shed for you. Joy or sadness or anger, every single tear was blood. My blood. Turned lever. Henry, stop! You. Your tears. Topham, good to see you again. Admittedly, I would have preferred less, uh, messy circumstances for our reunion, Commissioner. But there is a matter that is most urgent. I see. And, uh, what is this urgent matter? You were rather vague over the phone. If you would, please follow me, Commissioner. You're going to want to see this. This, said Sir Topham Hatt, was discovered amongst the wreckage. Oh my, is that what I think it is? It's the freight car that was stolen from Queen Consolidated earlier today. I've checked the insides and everything in there matches the description given to the local police by the lab technicians. Just then, Henry's driver and fireman arrived. Commissioner, they said, please, we didn't know what was in there. The freight car was given to us at the last second by another engine. We didn't have time to check it out or we would have been late. I'm sorry, said the commissioner, but other than the operators of that engine, I'm afraid you two are the only suspects for this crime so far, and I must place you, and for the first time in what I'm sure is all of the United Kingdom's history, your engine, under arrest, on charges of grand larceny. Yes, yes, commissioner, I understand. Thank you very much. Good night to you as well. Something doesn't feel right. Of course. Felicity, I need plane tickets.